okay very good good evening and uh, very good morning couple of years friends to there uh, yeah um today's topic more on like you know uh, uh, warehouse layout and um, may not go into deep um, ewm side uh, last time we have demonstrated them right when complex and inbound process but today more on like you know uh, what is the different warehouse layouts okay what kind of functions you know um, each inbound process outbound process and everything and also we will learn what kind of equipments we are going to use it what kind of packaging material we are going to use and what kind of um, um, devices we are going to use for in a warehouse i know see a lot of people you, you may be good you may be already experienced okay but in a wider context you know so i may give you like you know a basic insight you know so that everybody can understand so please uh, bear in mind like you know, i'm trying to like you know um, target every individual maybe somebody is very good experience somebody already aware of that but just we'll walk through that and if you are very familiar please bear, bear in mind bear in mind mind okay 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 just i will share my presentation um yeah hope we all can see my presentation yes yes okay yes so yeah last time we have discussed them right we have discussed a lot of things last time don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos uh just maybe we, two minutes i will walk through that last time we have uh, discussed the bodies the uwm we have discussed uh, we have discussed the basic advanced functionalities in awm and also we we have discussed the um, difference between the sap uh, simple warehouse management and the awm management and also we discussed about difference between the wm and awm so you know that uh, the functionalities like you know in a simple warehouse management what are things we can cover and what what is the awm we have like in you know, advanced uh, functionalities and also we discussed um, any ewm you know we have a three kind of process one is the inbound process and is one is the storage and operations and is the outbound process so very simple is any inbound means like anything you receive anything you receive for your warehouse that is called inbound so inbound means for example you may receive from the vendor so the for example you may request some raw material you may request for semi finished goods you may request finished goods so you may request from the external vendor okay when you request the external vendor and the vendor will deliver to your warehouse that is called inbound 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 delivery okay and also like you know you may you may already delivered some products to the customer sometimes they, they found the damage even after damage you know they will send it right? they will return it so customer returns so customer returns is also part of inbound process and also even in case if your your warehouse management is linked with the manufacturing industry so what happen is as soon as you produce the product you may not in a position to deliver to the customer am right you may send it back to the warehouse and to, to store some time and before delivering to the customer so even after manufacturing so you you receive the goods from your your own manufacturing plant so that is called also inbound process okay what are the st storage operations sorry one more thing i missed it even stock transfer even truck stock transfer means for example we have one warehouse one location maybe we can say one warehouse it, uh, it is in um, maybe i will refer you as majority okay assume that we have a one warehouse in texas one warehouse in new york okay so if you want to uh, for example one warehouse rec uh, need some uh, some parts or some finished goods and all so from new york we can get it so that is called stock transfer order the same company but the two plants so inbound means like you know um, receiving the goods and um, whether you may receive the goods from the vendors or from the customer returns or from the other plants that is called truck transfer order or from the um, manufacturing plant after uh, producing the goods so there are four typically is a four inbound deliveries okay but under storage and operations 
what do you mean storage and operations like you know physical inventory physical inventory means you always see you have a stock and the system shows some stock but physically if you go there but the stock is a different so always by using physical inventory you count the stock you correct the stock okay in a very layman terms okay and also replenishment replenishment means you have a one reserve area we have a fast moving area some slow moving area so how your warehouse structure is layout okay based on that you always replenish from um, reserve area to the main rack areas where is a fast moving goods so replen that is called replenishment and rearrangement and rearrangement is a slotting more or less you know um, how you are going to manage your goods uh, based on the seasons where fast moving slow moving goods that's where we will talk about rearrangements and kit to stock kit to stock means majority it depends on the production order so, okay see the kit to stock means production order the production order it contains a assembly assembly having a bill of materials bill of material means maybe uh, assume that the top level you need a one by skill so for by skill what are the parts you need okay the top the part name is a by skill but bill of material all wheels uh, mud guards and you know, rims um, everything you know whatever requirement see once you get the uh, requirement you know what you pick the goods and you pack it and you deliver to the customer that is called kit to stock and even kit to stock we have like you know a uh, reverse kitting is also there okay sometime you know you may not deliver to the uh, customer directly but what you do is you kit the stock and you will keep it back to the warehouse once you get the order then you deliver to the customer that is also possible the, using the kit to stock we can do uh, three activities just you pack it and keep it in a warehouse and once you get a um, uh, customer requirement then you know you will deliver to them and also sometime you want to reverse kitting means like you know you dismantle it again you, you you will put it back to the stock into the warehouse so kit to stock we will discuss more on that and what about outbound process okay and even sorry i missed one more and even storage operation anything like you know one location to other location maybe we can call as a ad hoc movements ad hoc movements for example you can move the handling units handling means is a case any handling unit okay you move from one location to other location that is also called handling units okay even you can also move ad hoc basis product one bin location to other bin location that is also come into the internal process where is the outbound process okay outbound is a majority you know is a, where you get orders from the customer okay and see if this outbound is a very vast field because in outbound you get depends on the business depends on the company you know um, they may get hundreds of deliveries 200 1000 so it depends on the business you know so you may get hundreds of orders how you are going to manage the outbound orders okay typical outbound process as i said like you know customer will place the order then against the sales order you create a outbound delivery then through the outbound delivery you will you will pick the goods pack it stage it and load it and send it to the customer okay what kind of outbound deliveries in reality okay remember standard deliveries just standard deliveries from one one, one city to other city one country to other and also rush deliveries okay standard deliveries rush deliveries even uh, here also as i said even stock transfer order also say tra stock transfer order also you will send it to your plant your warehouse to some other warehouse that's also one outbound delivery in coming to picture and also for example you receive the goods from the vendor after unloading and you realize that some of the parts is damaged okay then you want to send it back to the vendor am i right so vendor return vendor return management vendor vendor deliveries so vendor return deliveries you can say that so these are also outbound process don't think is only customer order is belongs to the outbound process okay within this outbound process we, as a, as i mentioned several categories rush deliveries standard deliveries okay in real time majority people say is a standard delivery or outbound is it a rush delivery and if they say is it is it a vendor return delivery or stock transfer delivery these are the typical deliveries 
Excuse me, sir. Yep. Yeah, sir. Can you go a bit slow, kind of, because you're kind of noting it down, and uh, all the terms like coming new, and and uh, it's kind of getting a bit faster. Yes. Sure. Yeah, one more question. Slowly. Will we be getting a recording of this? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay. So, in case if I missed on noting down, then so that's it. Yeah, sure. I will slowly read this. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And uh, as I said, like, because my intention here is uh, trying to give as much information, as much inputs for you, so that, you know, when you, uh, when you go to the SAP, so you will know that uh, what is the terminology. Okay. Don't worry about that. Maybe you may, there's uh, too many uh, items here, too many uh, terminologies, but the intention is you guys should be more familiar. Okay. More familiar. That's the intention of this class, today's class. Yeah, if you're getting this video, then fine. Like you can go through if I missed anything. Yeah. But then it's fine, I guess. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. And uh, as I said, like, you know, outbound, we have a several optimization is there, as we've discussed them, right? Last time, you know, see here. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Clear. And as I said, general basic things here, like you know, inventory management, inventory management, all storage and operations, inbound process, outbound process, and internal warehouse movement. As I said, like Hadaku base, you want to move one, one HU from one location to other location. Okay. And physical inventory, as we discussed, I mean, reporting is a very simple uh, operation. Okay, here. If you see the advanced one, See, inventory man optimization, slotting is the one example, even replenishment one, one example. And the inbound process optimization. See, simple inbound, as usual, you receive it and you will unload it and you will move to the final storage area. But there are some uh, certain some, uh, certain business requirements. You may not receive all the time as a homogeneous material means it's the same product. Major time you may receive non-homogeneous product. That means different products it contains in a single handling unit. Okay, that is called like you know the deconsolidation is going to play. And there is outbound process optimization. As I said, waves is a is a waves means don't worry about that. Assume that you have under deliveries. Okay, and within deliveries we have a several line items like you know how many products you need to sell, deliver to the customer. So how you are going to optimize it? whether all deliveries belongs to the one, one customer, whether all deliveries belongs to the one single route, like, you know, based on this route, based on the customer uh, location, you know, all, all these things, you know, you can optimize your deliveries. Like, you know, you can pick it, you can pack it, and you will deliver it. So how you are optimize the picking activities? You cannot go and, uh, like, you know, pick for every each and every delivery, right? It is a painful task as a warehouse. So you combine several deliveries and you create a several warehouse tasks. Then the warehouse clerk, he can go one time, he can bring, uh, he can pick it the goods and he move to the packing areas. So we will go in a very uh, detailed way, but just think that waves mean the wave importance is combining several deliveries and it creates the warehouse task. Then you categorize the warehouse task is a based on the certain requirement that is called there is a warehouse order creation rules are there, but we'll discuss more on that. And the material flow control system, as we discussed that, see this material flow mean is a completely is automated warehouse, where is a, um, is a driven by completely mechanical equipments, okay? Mechanical equipments only it reads the uh, all the uh, inbound re inbound re inbound request outbound request picking packing every activities you no know, it reads and it um, system goes automatically picks the goods and even drops the goods okay I will show a couple of videos so that you will understand better way and as, as I said ad management transportation in it and the labor management and this also value added service because majority of the EWM systems you know they use a VAS value added service for kitting, especially, you know, for kitting without VAS, VAS work center, you know, you cannot do any kitting. Okay. Value added service. VAS means value added service. Okay. Kitting, as I said, like, you know, you is a kitting means as a kit. It consists of several parts that is called a kit. 
and cross docking as i said cross docking means it may not stay any product it may not store in our in our warehouse you receive the goods it comes the inbound and it goes to the outbound so how you are going to maintain what kind of products this process should undergo see that's why system how 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 it knows that what kind of product it goes for the cross docking so there is a master data you have to set up so that which product should undergo cross docking all this thing and also same thing vas how the system knows what kind of product should undergo value added service so you have to maintain certain master data so material master data some controls require so based on that system will propose what kind of process okay just i will go to several warehouse layouts and uh, i will show some terminologies so that you will be more familiar today's class okay so as we, as we discussed last time remember right um see this is a common warehouse layout designs hope you all can see this picture see the typical warehouse layouts you know so as we discuss u shape design okay that means this is the most common organizational layout okay so what you use you use for the inbound separate lane for outbound is a different lane okay so this is the um, docking area and these are the transportation units and you know already anything you know in front of the door that is called docking area and these are the high racks this is the most often popular one okay. and this is also i shape design i shape design means one side is the inbound area and you receive the goods and other area is the outbound you deliver the goods so there is inbound and outbound for everything any warehouse you know one is inbound or the one is the outbound so this i shape is also like you know it's a good for the high volume where is a very complex warehouse you no know, you'll go for this high volume areas i shape u shape and i shape and also some warehouse you know they will go for l shape design as i said one is receiving the products other one is to deliver the products so it may not be there sometime you know there are some occasional all these things should be single lane only it may not be separate everything is you no know, one single lane and is uh, inbound comes even outbound goes same doors same docking area they use both inbound and outbound hello naidu sir i'm sorry for interrupt uh, some students say ppt notes here so please check sorry sorry can you hear can you see now yes sir now is okay, okay. yeah please you can ping me if you have any problem yeah okay sorry ma'am you missed something see the, as i said like you know it's a typical u shape and the i shape and the l shape these are the typical warehouse layouts in the real um, real world okay so you may work different kind of you may for implementing you know you may come across this kind of uh, um, several warehouses okay okay this is a u shape one as i said like this is inbound that one is the outbound okay and these are the transportation units and this way i shape this is the inbound area and the one is the outbound area so there is separate one this l shape is also we have one inbound area one outbound area okay so clear this one okay this is a one of the um, good warehouse you no know, where we can discuss all these terminologies now okay. see as i said like you know this warehouse see, everything here now see now everything is a one single lane only so even inbound comes here they dock it and outbound is also somewhere here so the terminal as well i will explain here this is a typical warehouse you know complex warehouse and where um, we will we will capture as many as many words and as many terminologies in terms of warehouse see um, see this one you know vehicle it's we will start from the vehicle you know this is the transportation unit okay this is called tu means transportation unit in terms of uwm we speak tu is a transportation unit this one is a, you know the vehicle 
So th this rectangular box is called a transportation unit. Okay, this is a vehicle. Inside the transportation, definitely you have a handling units. Whatever handling units you have, same thing they will keep here. Okay, this turn. And these are the docking areas. Look at this, all the doors, you know, this is called the docking areas. If you connect here, this is called a docking. When you connect the vehicle to the door, that is called a docking. Okay. In a real world, um, in a warehouse terminology, people will people will call as a trailer. Okay. T R A I L A trailer. Okay. The trailer. We may call in a EWM, EWM side, we call it transportation in it, but in a warehouse operator, warehouse supervisor, they will think this is a trailer. Okay. The T U will be called in another name is called a trailer. Okay. And so this is the assume that this is the inbound area. Okay. These may be these three. Okay. And we will treat this is the outbound area. This, this is the inbound door. And uh, in front of this door, this is the staging area. Maybe we can call it this entire area is a staging area, staging area. Staging area. And as soon as you receive the goods, you know, you dock it, you know, you unload the goods here. Okay. These are all the staging areas. And once you receive the goods, you know, you stage it and then you may move it into whether high racks, maybe you may move it into the um, another high racks, and maybe you may move it into the this one. Depends on, like, you know, the product. This, this is the handling unit, okay? Remember these all the um, boxes, am right? This is called the handling unit, okay? In a warehouse terminology, people will use a case, C-A-S-E case, or in a EWM side, we can call as a handling unit, okay? Handling unit. Sorry, I'm unable to write it as something, okay? Handling unit. So don't confuse sometime when you are working with the warehouse guys, you know, they call it a case. Okay, we will call it a handling unit. So, so now everything, you know, so in terms of the warehouse, you need to understand that every area, see the door itself is a, is a physical location. Staging area is also a physical location. Okay? Anything even racking is also storing is a physical location, physical area. So, how do you call in a GWM terminology? Even door we can call as a storage type. Storage type. Okay. If you want to define the door as a physical location in EWM, the, the name is called storage type. Okay. Door is called a storage type. Staging area is also called a storage type. For example, I may not move directly my product to final rack location. Okay. Then I will do everything packing here. What I will do, I will take this handling unit. I will unpack it and pack it also. This is called work center. Okay. The physical location is called a work center. Work center means, in a, in a various terminology, work center means you unpack it and pack it, or you may be just you packing also. So work center is also physical location. You do certain activities. Either you do packing or unpacking or repacking, the labeling or relabeling, okay, printing the handling units. So all these activities you can perform at the work center. So even work center also you have to define as a storage type. Any physical location in the warehouse, you have to define as a storage type. And storage type is the followed by the storage bin. Storage type is a very highest level. And the storage bin is the lowest level. And in between, there is a section, storage section. Okay. You may not use the storage section, but in a EWM, storage section is an optional one. So you may use storage section, may not, may not. It all depends on the business requirement. Okay. Remember, any physical location, you need to define as a storage type. Okay. The storage type, it, it tells the role. What kind, what kind of storage type this one? Whether it is a door, whether it is a staging area, whether it is a work center, whether it is a high racks. High racks means the storage area. These are all the storage area. Okay, main storage areas. Main storage areas. I can call as a high racks. 
because since you know all the uh, vertical vein is high racks okay and this is the floor area you can call as a stage staging area also because i call as a is a staging area inbound staging area inbound staging area this one is inbound staging area this one i call as a outbound staging area outbound staging area okay this one is inbound staging area and this called outbound staging area so anything you receive the goods okay you drop at the inbound staging area and uh, depends on the business requirement sometime you may send it to the um, uh, inspection sometime you may count it sometime you may see the damage you may send it to the quality team before put into final final racks okay so even quality inspection is also is a one inspection area i mean quality inspection is also a work center so that means is also physical location definitely there is a storage type you have to define for that so any physical location in the warehouse you need to define as a storage type okay whether it is a door whether it is inbound whether it is a work center whether it is a racks or even even the, for example see you have a several uh, conveyors also here even conveyor also you have to define as a storage type i have any physical location storage type is followed by the storage bins bin is the lowest where you are going to keep into the bin okay bin means like as i said like you know see for example all the doors i i create i define as a storage type as a door each door one door two door three door four you can define as a door one one bin door two is a one bin okay all all the all the doors we can call as a storage type as a door and we have a several roles we will see it okay then each door has a bin and the same thing even a inbound staging area so even inbound staging area this entire location i can call as inbound staging area inbound staging storage type and this location i can simplify okay this is the one inbound staging one and inbound staging two this is one bin this is another bin so the storage type under the storage type within that area you can always uh, uh, um, you can divide into several bins see for example this high racks am i right this each one is one bin so each one if you look at the handling unit each is a one bin here this is a one bin okay but here we will call as a like you know entire area is a call as a one bin this is the staging bin staging st inbound staging area as a storage type and uh, the floor area is entire we can call as a staging bin okay so uwm we how to define storage type and storage bin so you cannot just define storage bin without storage type okay so any physical location you have to define storage type followed by the storage bin section is not a mandatory okay okay this is the inbound one see outbound one so as soon as you receive the um, um uh, orders what warehouse clerk will do you may pick the goods from here or here or here so if he is, he is picking from here you will drop conveyor you receive it from here and if he is he is getting here so you may drop here and from here you may drop here okay and uh, as soon as you pick the goods from the main storage location remember you are picking the goods for the against the order from the main areas main storage area these are the main storage areas so you pick the goods and at the drop at the work center i just said packing work center maybe we can call as a packing work center packing work center as i said any work center is a physical location you have to define as a storage type as a work center and uh, and what purpose, what is the purpose of work center as i said purpose of work center is you can pack it you can print the labels you can unpack it you can repack it okay once you pack it then you move it into the outbound staging area then as i said you have to create one storage type as outbound storage type and also you have to define one bin immediately as i said as soon as you create one storage type it should be followed by the bin the entire area 
I can call as a outbound staging, um, outbound staging bins. Or you want to create several one. For example, I want to create one staging one, another staging one, another staging one. So it all depends, you know, how many bins you wanted within the outbound staging area, staging, staging in storage type. You can always divide based on the requirement. So once you pack it, you move here, and then after that you load the goods. This is the outbound process. And see, um, these are the I mean typical layout actually inbound, outbound, all thing. And we will come, we will go through some more. Uh, Okay, some more pictures. Let me share some more. This is a, a, another kind of a warehouse layout. So, so this is also one more layout. See everything you have seen, am I right? One is the inbound area, one is the outbound area. So that's this is the one color. And this is all the high racks and all. This is the one more uh, um, retail warehouse layout. Hope you, are, you can see this retail warehouse layout. Yeah. This is the one more typical retail warehouse. So as I said, everything. So you, you receive the inbound staging area and the inbound staging area. And is always, you know, uh, these are the main racks. See, this one is the lanes. We can call it the lanes. Put away path, put away picking path. And uh, these are the free areas. And uh, this is the outbound staging areas, outbound um, path. See, this is the outbound area. See, outbound staging area and also packing stations. In front of outbound, we have always packing stations, pick orders. And also we have a VAS work center. As I said, VAS means is a value added service. You can all wait till you can label it, you can kit it, you can relabeling, printing, several activities you can perform at the value added service. And as we, we discussed them, right? Even inbound return process, customer returns is also part of inbound process. Vendor returns is also part of outbound process. And also you may get a damage, damage items. Even keeping damage items is also one work center. You have to say the work center. Okay. This is another uh, small sized retail warehouse. This is the one more warehouse uh, layout. You, I think we discussed last time. This is uh, another uh, typical warehouse. Okay. So everything, everything we just say inbound, inbound docks, and the staging area, and the storage area. All high racks is the storage area. And uh, again, is a packing station. And um, so you stage it and you deliver the goods to the uh, customer. So, for example, this case, you look at this, you know, this product is going to only this location. Okay, this product is going to this location. This product is going to this location. Okay, how the system knows, okay, which product should go to which, um, which store, which racks, or um, how the system knows. So we have always seen, right? So when you receive the goods, we have called as a put away control indicators. Put away, okay, put away control indicators. We use a put away control indicators. We have a several uh, um, uh, process, you know, several approaches, put away control indicators, uh, put away controls, put away, con uh, put, away uh, put away approaches. So we will adopt the put away approaches. We will say that this product should go to here, this high racks, this product should go to this product, this area, this product should go to this area. Okay. We have a several put away strategies where we can adopt and we can, we can say that we can we can configure such a way that you know system proposes uh, each handling unit it, it should go to the designated area and also same thing like you know when you receive the order same thing how the system will pick it so we have again you know stock removal control indicators is there that means we have a stock removal strategies we have so using the stock removal strategies Okay, that's called you know SRCI stock removal um, control. Usually we call SRCI stock removal control indicators, put away control indicators. So we use for this one uh, for the put away strategies, put away strategies for stock removal. We have a stock removal, uh, stock removal strategies. We have. 
okay several strategies we have so based on the uh, strategies and you will you will you will pick the goods and then you move to the packing area then you pack it and you may in a, as i said like you know any packing work center you may do some label printing the labels printing hu labels printing the address labels uh, printing the pick hu labels printing the even pot labels or pot list also so you know you, when you deliver somebody right you may you may give all the information so you print it at the work center work center area only okay this is the outbound staging area okay this is the inbound stage And this is a, just to understand, you know, how it will uh, high racks and also this is a typical high rack place <clears throat> where we can uh, keep it. And uh, this location is called oil in the path. The pathway is called oil, A S I L E oil path. Okay? This location is called. So see everything you can see. I don't know whether you can see there is a barcodes also there, and um, and this this location, you know, this entire this rectangular area. This is called a bin. Okay. The lowest lowest in the warehouse is called a bin. So there's a bin. Under the bin, you can see several products. They are it's a placed here. So you know that, right? So as I said, every physical area you have to define as a storage type. For example, this if it is a hierarchs, then you have to define storage type as a hierarchs. Then under that, how many bins require? It all depends on business. You know, you may require hundred. Maybe you may thousand, ten thousand, seventy thousand depends on the warehouse requirement. You know, you can create a, um, several bins. Can we create bins in the manually? We can create so, manually, but generally, you know, we will uh, upload into the system. You know, we have um, how to upload the bins and all. Uh, we will discuss later. You know, how to upload the bins and all. Okay. This is the one more uh, typical warehouse. Um, this is a complex warehouse. I'm not sure you can see this one. See this one, they integrated even MFS also. As I said, you know, material flow system, MFS. Material flow system means that is the automatic, automatic, automated storage and also automated, um, automated retrieval, ASRS, ASRS, okay? automatic uh, automated storage and automated retrieval so here if you look at there is a already um, vertical uh, uh, stackers we have here so you, no human being can go here uh, to place the goods and to pick the goods this entire area i'm talking about this area is a completely managed by the mechanical equipment is a completely automated warehouse this is so this mfs is going to play picture because even you have a conveyors here, several conveyors. So this is a completely automated warehouse. Like, you know, even ASR also introduced here. Advanced automated storage and automated um, retrieval. And also there are high racks also there. We have, you know, open, open storage areas we have. And uh, so, so th this one, I can say this is the uh, ASRS means like, you know, it's a completely automated warehouse this is. Okay, it's not like a simple um, manual warehouse. This is the this is a complete automated warehouse. Okay, uh, th these are the typical layouts. Okay, then next one I will introduce uh, some of things is uh, warehouse equipments. Okay, what kind of warehouse equipments um, we can use in the warehouse? Okay, typical warehouse equipment layers. Okay. what kind of equipments we use in the warehouse okay. as i mentioned earlier for wider uh, for the to explain like you know while talking you know, right, the people should understand every terminology for them for the betterment of every individual i'm trying to give as much information as much warehouse terminologies so that you know you will uh, understand better in ewm okay. see these are the like you know um several uh, equipments they are going to use in a warehouse see here in a pallet truck hand pallet truck this is called hand pallet truck this is the semi -elect electric pallet truck then in the overall we can call as a truck 
okay but how you distinguish within that is a different names this is a manual stacker this is semi automatic so you, by looking this when you understand that there is a stacker under truck pallet truck and uh, you know the electric pallet truck manual pallet truck and also this hierarch electric stacker see this is the uh, electric is a very very big uh, electric stacker if it is a, your hierarchs are very very high am i right typically you know um, seven levels eight levels only we can manage in the warehouse so seven level means is a seven bin so you can say vertically the seven bins so level so if you want to like put away you want to retrieval may not possible using this man uh, hand pallet or semi pallet and all even electric pallet so definitely you need a big uh, electric stacker is required to because in a fifth level uh, in a warehouse it may not possible using a, a couple of a couple of trucks or stacker so you may need a very big uh, electric stackers okay this is all the warehouse equipment um, just to remember that one is a hand pallet truck one is a semi electric and electric and also some uh, anything you know you can get stacker also another name is a stacker okay pallet truck another stacker even for even a stacker also we can use only putting the pallets we will see what is a pallet next okay these are the typical warehouse equipments even i will share a couple of pictures so you know so these are the different you know um um equipments you know they use in the warehouse this is the hand one as i discussed just now don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos so these also like you know other um, different products you know so hope you get it right okay this also a uh, different terminology you know some so this is a lift table electric truck but majority we can call as a truck and as a stacker so and sometime people will call it when forklift also okay so you expose now what is the pallet truck you expose now what is the stacker and also now you can say somebody will call it even forklift also okay this is a manual truck and electric truck okay, okay. <clears throat> so this one this is the this is called pick hqs pick hqs pick handling units means when you get the order what you will do you will take some uh, some kind of uh, boxes some kind of uh, trailers you take it to the rack areas to bring the goods for example i can call as a this is the trailer sorry trolley t r o l l e y trolley okay trolley within the trolley you can keep several boxes so that you can pick the goods and you can drop here that this is called pick hq in a gwm terminology you will call as a pick hq pick handling unit that means you are picking the goods to pick the goods during that time how the system knows whether when you when you pick it and drop here how the system knows where is lying you have already picked here system says is already removed here then how the system knows you it is there in the pick hq that means you should create one label here and put the label then you move the goods from bin to the pick uh, pick hq location system system will show that if you check the stock system shows the product is lying in the pick hq since you are picking the terminal is called pick hq hq means a handling unit as i said handling units and maybe box also even trolley is also a pick hq i can assign entire trolley i will print out one label hq label then i, I will attach this trolley then i treat as entire trolley as a pick hq pick handling hq okay in a warehouse terminology they use a trolley but what we do in a ewm side we will call as a pick handling unit hope it makes sense for you guys okay and see so this one uh, um this one if you look at this is a stacker you have seen 
and uh, these are the handling units these are the handling units maybe handling or maybe you can call as a even a pallets also okay my phone to show some more This is also one more pick HU, okay? Pick HU, pick handling unit. Okay? So this this a uh, metal part, no? We can call as a pick HU, or you want to within this pick HU, each one as a pick HU, then you can put a label for each one, because you want to make a distinguish. Then you can always uh, you can label it, and you will pick the goods and pick the item and place onto this one. Okay? But overall, I can say this is a trolley, okay? trolley boxes everything so picker is uh, taking this trolley and um, picking the goods maybe it's very small but see this one these are the handling units and uh, this this high stacker carrying with the hu this is a i think wrapped items wrapped products but this the handling units okay these are the uh, typical warehouse equipments okay we have covered now with the warehouse layout typical warehouse layouts and also we covered different uh, warehouse equipments now we will, we will see what kind of packing materials okay what kind of packing materials we can use in the warehouse okay just just as i said like you know um, handling units okay. look at this one hope you can see everybody can see this see these are the handling units okay i can call it this handling unit in the warehouse terminology the people who use the case and within this handling everything is handling units these are the handling units and and also if you look at there there is a wood items are there wood piece is there for everything there is a wood piece why we need wood piece here these are the pallets remember any wood piece or plastic one okay these are the pallets this is the handling unit this is the handling unit the wooden item is called a pallet okay even pallets also we have a different kind of pallets we have okay we will call typically you know in any in industry they use a chip pallet us pallets euro pallets and p63 and so on so on we will see that the difference what is the difference between the different pallets okay what kind of diff, uh, typical material you know is a wood material or is a plastic material okay so now you know that see for example this one i will explain here only for example this one i can call it the p63 the term is don't worry about the p63 just you know this a uh, cap kind of stuff you know the p63 Okay, this is a one kind of packing material. Okay, for everything, but you attach the wood because you know using the stacker, as you know you have seen them, right? Forklifts, stackers, all these things. You know, you if you want to put a, uh, put in the uh, put into this bin or or um, pick these goods, you need a proper stacker and also you need a pallet so that you can move the goods smoothly. Okay. the importance of the pallets is like you know you put the handling in it you remove the handling in it in a smooth way that's where the design happen am i right stacker stacker we it is a four ways here also we have a four ways options like you know, we will discuss what about four ways two ways this one how stacker can you know uh, you use different ways to um, uh, pick put away and pick the goods okay these are the handling in it the, as you know this is the bin this is a very big bin and within the bin you have a say several bins within this one we have a three we can keep three handling units maximum three handling i can keep one more handling units here okay this is a one hu if i this is a empty bin this is called empty bin now this is empty because nothing is there here it is already filled okay this entire location is called a bin within a bin this bin allowed maximum three pallets maximum three pallets okay so maximum it's allowed three pallets so this is one pallet this is another pallet 
and if is empty win so you certainly you know if um, in case if this is a good system proposes here and uh, you know you can uh, you can do the put away okay this is a typical uh, rack and you know um, several uh, packings several even as i said pallets are within the pallets also you have several different uh, types of pallets and the packing also several uh, packing uh, different packings also we have so now so now i'm going to show the pallets okay see that what kind of pallet styles we have just now you have seen him right if you want to carry handling in it you should you should put handling in it first into the for example if i want to carry any any hu means uh, packing material means then you have to you have to you have to put in the pallet so through the pallet you know i can put a stacker then i can move from one location to other location see this one two way entry that means only two way this way or this way the high stacker can uh, uh, you can move the goods okay this is also two way entry and this way and this way and uh, is a four way entry see high stacker you know it can you can move, you can pick from here or else you can pick from this way also that is called two way and four way entries okay this is the uh, pallet styles so whether the pallet is a two way entry or four way entry okay remember this is not um, our ewm side but you know to expose all the terminologies that's what i'm trying to cover it because you, at the end of the day when you learn it ewm you are going to work with the business people you are going to be the where are supervisors only so if they talk about this kind of pallets and everything you should not surprise that oh what is what for that instance you know so i'm trying to expose you know these terminologies see this one um look at here i have seen now this is a pallet is a wooden one this is the four two four way because a high stacker can carry this way and this way so how many boxes we have here total i think 1 2 3 4 5 and is almost uh, 12 products we have 12 here 12 boxes we have all the 12 boxes we can place into the handling unit okay so this entire one you know you can wrap up you can wrap any any auxiliary packing material you can wrap you can deliver to the customer or you can do the put away also okay this each box sometime we can call as a cartoon even we can call as a cartoon so remember one product means each one product means is a each if are keeping um if for example you know the coke bottles you know how you pack it you know the 12 12 bottles you will keep them right 12 bottles one uh, one case like that so one one piece means one each and uh, if we keep 12 if one carton sorry one carton is equal to 12 each that is called carton cartoon having a twelve product twelve items mean that is called a cartoon so like this these are this is the one cartoon the second cartoon okay so how many cartoons we have here is almost twelve cartoons so one pallet one pallet is equal to maybe around twelve cartoons this is a way also you can define this so one piece means each twelve products means we can call as a one cartoon is all depends whether 2 12 or 10 or 15 is all business requirement okay if they say 12 you maintain one cartoon then you define it accordingly you maintain the master data if they say one pallet they say is okay 12 cartoons one cartoon here okay this is the one pallet hope you understand the terminologies one piece means one each Twelve parts we can call as a one cartoon. Twelve cartoons we can call as a one pallet. This is one one pallet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
okay this is a wonderful picture so we can see we can understand the uh, different types of pallets see in a, in a real time you know in a real time business you have to you have to create a master data so all the different types of pallets you know you have to define everything once you understand the business requirement uh, from the warehouse so you need to know what kind of pallets they have say this one is a chap pallets the only the difference between this maybe sizes maybe is uh, one way as yes, we discussed remember right is a, is a two way this is a two way or one way is all like like the different so this is a inch pallets this one is a pallets is a 48 by 96 this is a block pallets this is the stringer pallets this is the wood pallets this is the euro pallets remember real time we use a chap pallets the terminology we use a chap pallets and the euro pallets see each chap and the pallets in the different as i said a length weight is a width the volume these are the dimensions need to vary further remember that all the time when you are doing a packing you need to understand the weights and dims in a real time we call as the weights and dims that means any product you know you have a weights length width volume and we always you know uh, and weight weights and dims is a very very important when you are um, when you are defining a uh, different kind of pallets okay so you know that now chap you you know what do you mean of pallet pallet it carries the um handling units you know uh, how what kind of pallets you know that you have a, you know the chap pallet um, you know there is a european related pallets they call it the european pallets and also us pallets is there because us having their own definition because their own dimension they call it euro pallets remember same bin it may not fit chap pallets same bin it may not fit the euro pallet you know the bin means you know now hyrax you have seen already right you know the bin means the lowest area where you will keep the handling units so you need to be very careful about what kind of pallets you are going to put into the warehouse so that that product if it is a chap related product then you have to put only the product should go to the chap 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 related bins only so so once you understand the business you know all the what kind of pallet then you have to maintain the master data hope now you know that pallets okay. anyway we will discuss more on that but see uh, uh, expose the terminologies and uh, one more as i said like you know um, we have um, some more uh, models we have so this is as i said wooden one we have seen him right this is the another is all depend it depends on business they may go for even plastic is also a pallet okay as i said like you know this is a four way pallet because we because a high stacker can uh, um move the move from this way or even it can move this way so uh, this also as we discuss am right this also chap pallet so it looks like this so now you, you know that what do you mean pallet see now you know the stacker you know now wooden item is a pallet we don't know whether it is a chap pallet whether euro pallet or we don't know as of now okay so that's what we, so but we know by looking this one you know this is a pallet you know this is the handling in it okay and also you know that there are uh, something is there cartoons also there several cartoons become a one pallet here okay you know uh, so now you expose the terminology what do you mean of each each means one product okay if it 10 products we can call as a one cartoon 12 cartoons can be one pallet okay so so as we said this is the rack this is the what this area this is the high rack and this is the bin so you can see that products are already lying here okay see including pallet they are keeping remember if you don't keep pallet the warehouse operator warehouse clerk cannot um, pick the goods so you have to keep handling in it along with the pallets along with the pallets Thanks. 
next one means uh, yeah this is the typical you know any warehouse you know they will keep uh, one designated place where if they will keep these all the wooden ones you know wooden pallets these are all wooden pallets okay. all wooden pallets so they will they have some designated place they will keep all the pallets they will keep it okay then you know um, when you receive the goods you know you may repack it and pack it then you know use the someone uh, one pallet then you will put into the final bins on same time when you get the order and you um, pick the goods and um, pack it then you will put onto the handling units remember without pa without pallet you cannot deliver the goods and you cannot receive also okay because we, uh, every handling they will keep them this way. and there are some areas you know where we call as a because we most of the time we discuss the only high racks high racks there are areas we can call as a mezzanine bins also there where you cannot keep a handling bin where you can keep as the loose parts loose parts means is a free parts okay is a just a box where you will keep into the, all the goods i will i will source one warehouse later maybe this is it. yeah this is the packing material so these are all the packing materials and these are the handling units and these are the several packing materials so these are all the packing materials okay. next all the packing materials and the next one is other one is rf devices okay uh, in terms of warehouse equipment we have discussed the stackers and we have discussed the forklifts we have discussed about uh, um, different pallets euro pallet chap pallets of the different sizes now we we will what is the left for us is rf devices okay the radio frequency devices because in a real time even after implementation you may use a ui but business user they call as a end users and who is the uh, really they are working on that picking activities packing activities put of activities so they use the rf guns they may not use our sap right they may not use our sap gui where we are working now so they they all the warehouse op operator like you know uh, is a main uh, is a simple for them is it should be very simple device where they can easily um unload the goods and move the goods pick the goods even they can pack it using the rf guns so next equipments in, they use is the rf guns okay these are the typical rf guns okay it looks like typical hand rf guns so these are the typical equipment see majority you know in a in a in a what kind of devices we have we have a samsung uh, rf guns and we have motorola also and we have a zebra and other devices we have zebra devices so in a real time you know majority we may use uh, samsung motorola zebra and so on so okay so these are the equipments you use it and you will connect our sap rf uh, rf environment to the this device okay last time you know i explained i demonstrated one um, Com um, complex inbound process. I have used even RF RF here also. I use a GUI transaction instead of using RF GUI transaction. Then when you connect this device, definitely the warehouse clerk he will log in. Then he will perform the all the activities. Okay, using this is RF devices and the more some more uh, devices. Yeah, this is a uh, one more RF device. Yeah, this is the typical one so it looks like this so using this one only um, the warehouse operator majority i will call is a warehouse operator because warehouse clerk is a bigger role little bit bigger role and after that we have as a warehouse supervisor okay the roles also important right when you define the roles also very important so you may give uh, a little bit authorization for this warehouse clerk warehouse operator you give better better um, access to the warehouse clerk you may give more access to the warehouse supervisor so depends on the role you may give um, access also what kind of uh, this warehouse operator say for example i have one warehouse operator he may perform only inbound so i can give only inbound access 
So there are other where other warehouse operator they may use for outbound. Then then I may use outbound also. So when while designing RF RF um, RF EI environment, you know, when while working in the RF environment, we will see what kind of um, um, tabs they need, and um, so we, whether we can disable, whether we can enable. Uh, so that's all business requirement. You know, we can do that. So the using this device. The warehouse clerk will do the all the operations. I just said, what what are the activities he can do? He can do unloading. He can do um, moving the HUs, and he can do final put away. He can also do deconsolidation. He can do deconsolidation here also, but he can't do VAS. VAS is not possible because he is not at all there here. Okay, standard and um, best practice system VAS is not at all there. So we need to do some custom one implement for that. So and you can also do uh, in terms of outbound, you know, you can pick the activities and you can um, um, packing, you can do that. And you can move the HUs and also you can load the goods. So using all these activities, you can do that. Even internal movements, for example, one bin location to another bin location. Using RF gun, yeah, certainly you can do that. Using replenishment, yes, he can do that. And using physical inventory, yes, he can do here. All the counting activities, physical inventory counting activities, he can perform using RF gun only. Okay, so real time, you know, as I said, even you may know now, because now we can call it a SAP GUI, graphical user interface. This is one way we can do all the operations. Second one, you can use RF UI. For where a warehouse clerk will do that. Another one we can call it a Fiery applications. Okay, Fiery is a web-based applications. Okay, same thing in a GUIM, right? So in a simplified way, so the warehouse operator, um, even warehouse clerk and the supervisor can use Fiery web applications instead of using SAP GUI. He will use Fiery web-based applications where you can use all the activities. As I said, you can also perform all these activities. And also you can see monitor also, but we cannot use monitor here. You know, the purpose of monitor means you see the stock, you see the warehouse activities, everything. Okay, but you, can, you, cannot, you, you cannot see any warehouse activities in the monitor, uh, sorry, uh, in the RF, RF, um, RF device. So then, you know, uh, for them, you know, if you want to um, set up everything, you know, uh, free applications, then you can use it all the free applications instead of GUI. Okay, so these are the display, like you know, you, you, this is the where you can do all the activities, various activities. Whether you use SAP GUI, whether you're using RF UI, whether you may use a free web applications. Okay, smart call smart applications, and also as I said, RF UI. It depends on the size, length, and width. Whether it is a smart device, whether it is a tabs, whether it is a uh, this kind of you know, RF guns. So you can always fit uh, your. Um, it it fits based on the devices. It fit. It's supposed to fit automatically. I mean, that's where we you know we need to do some uh, um, uh, layouts like RF layouts, so such a way that each device can fit. Okay, even dynamic is also possible. You know that a dynamic website, right? You can, if you open the same website in your mobile and the same website, if in the desktop, it fit, fits that. If it's not dynamic and it may not fit, it will it will show different, different layouts. So that layout should fit in a, any device. Either it is Samsung device, the Jibda device, even tabs or anywhere. Um, these are the uh, these are the main equipments only. Then just I will see anything I can miss to cover as a basics. And uh, this one. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Uh, 
uh, this is the you know the structural elements of SAPWM. That's what we discussed them, right? So this is the uh, warehouse at the warehouse under the you know storage type. We discussed what do you mean the storage type. We also discussed the bins, and the quant is the lowest one. You know, quant you can call it the bin, but when quant means like you know within the handling unit, the product is called a quant. Okay, you have you have a handling unit. Within the handling unit, you keep the products, am I right? This is a quant. Okay. I'm talking about um, if it is a high rack, if it is a high rack like this, this is a high rack. This is a bin. You know that this is a bin. Okay. This is a, maybe I will put on a wooden item as a, as a pallet. This is a pallet. You know that two ways or not. This is a pallet. On the pallet, this is the HE. Handling in it. Okay. This is a bin. And this is the HU. And within the HU, you have a product. So assume that you have a 10 products or 10, 20 products. That inside the product is called a quant. Okay. Inside the product is called a quant. And activity areas. What do you mean by activity area? Means like, you know, um, we may discuss later because don't worry about this too much uh, about activity areas on that. Okay. Uh, hope you already suppose now. So what I will do now, I will show a couple of the um, videos so that, you know, whatever we discuss, so you, you will come to know uh, uh, some of the terminologies and, you know, um, okay. Just I will share a couple of videos now. Uh, I will stop at this moment. Um, before uh, playing videos, uh, do you have any questions, you know, I will uh, move now. No participant. Yeah, do you have any, any questions, please? Now, I missed out. Can you tell me about the storage types? Pardon? Can yeah, you speak loudly? Types. Would you please explain that story? A stock yeah, type. storage type means I, uh, yeah, stock types or storage types. Can you hear now? Yeah, yeah. I'm able to okay. hear. Uh, earlier, yeah, okay. you told about the uh, stock the storage types. Yeah, I just said storage type means any physical area. Okay, any physical area. As I just said doors. You want to define, you have a 10 doors. All doors, all doors will categorize into one storage type that is called, uh, um, it's a physical area. You know, you, if you want to define each area um, into as a storage type, then you, there is a role for the, if it's a door, there is a separate storage type role. If it is the staging area, we can put a different store in this role. For the work center, there is a different um, role we have. So remember, storage type is a is um to define the physical location, right? Whether it is a door, whether it is a stage inbound area, whether it is a um, work center, whether it is a high racks, whether it is a mezzanine location, and so on. So, okay. That is called storage type. So remember, in a, any warehouse, if you see any physical location, first you need to see what kind of storage type. Is it inbound storage? If it is a door, it is a, is a work center, whether it is a high racks. That is the physical location. You know, my physical location, if you want to define any area, storage type means what? You keep the goods, am I right? St you, you, storage type means you are keeping some items. That is a storage type. Is it clear? And I will show some picture on that. See here. See now, see now I have a warehouse now. Remember, I have a warehouse. So in, in a EWM, in a EWM terminology, if I want to define my doors. I have a, a three doors, assume that I have a three doors. If I want to define the three doors, I should define my doors as a storage type, the physical physical uh, uh, identity of that. Okay. If I want to define my staging area, then, th then the staging area, I have to define this entire staging area as a storage type. 
the storage type may be as i said like you know door is also storage type inbound is area is also storage type even racks is also storage type okay each one each physical location where you are trying to keep the goods so that is called the storage type okay the bin means the lowest one as i said like you know storage type is a followed by the storage bin finally you will keep in the door is a bin only don't think don't think like the oh, oh bin i thought is a bin only this area bin no is not like that see out of uh, this entire all the doors i define as a door storage type each one has a door one one bin door two another bin door three another bin and also i can define this entire staging area this is the inbound staging area within this one in front of door one i can say okay this is the inbound staging inbound staging bin one inbound staging one sorry is not clear this one one inbound staging bin one and the in op, another uh, an opposite to another other door you can say inbound staging two and this is the another staging three bin so that means you move the goods from this door to here so the physical you know the physical location the area you define it 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 uh, comes under any area you know if you want to define it in a in a ewm site you have to define as a storage type okay followed by the bin for this one is also this is a high rack bins this is the final storage area you where you are going to keep the goods okay this is each bin even flooring is also is a bin remember storage type is a followed by the bin hope is clear yeah any questions sorry i didn't see this one can you explain storage section okay the priyanka is asking okay section hello priyanka yeah section means as i said you know in ewm is a is not a mandatory but still we can define as a section okay as i said within this staging area within this staging area i can define as a three sections okay as i said instead of going for like the bin then i will say divide this one against this one storage storage type followed by the storage sex this is the section 1 section 2 section 3 within this section i can divide into one is this is a one bin this is another bin within this section this one is one bin or another bin here i may go for within this section i can create this is a one bin this is the another bin this is the another bin okay so typically as i said na ikke mera storage type and a section storage section and storage bin but storage section in a ewm is not a mandatory unless really needed but storage type is a followed by storage bin is a more than enough to define the every area first of all you, when you look at the warehouse you need to understand that hey there should be one storage type there should be followed by the bin or section that's what you should get in the mind the moment you see each location section means within the storage type you know you, you see this, this entire storage area you have divided in can you hear okay good just a minute yeah. sir can you please explain cross docking okay okay sir can you please allow me when the central bin for the section is optional um priyanka you are asking am right even in decentralized ewm storage section is optional yes yeah even is is a material whether it is a central decentralized everywhere is fine and uh, krishna kanchar is asking what is the best uh, practice while defining doors storage type relationship one to one yeah um the best practice krishna is always am right um, depends on the business and also layouts also as i said the layouts also whether if you want to categorize see i displayed now if you see this one yeah 
as i said like you know see for example this entire area they can this define as a storage type and uh, see all the doors for a 1 to 10 maybe is a five doors or 10 doors or six doors they use all the doors for multi purpose they use for in inbound docs even outbound docs so but in a good practice you know if you define inbound separate storage type inbound uh, separate bins is a good uh, good practice rather than everything define um, all the bins um, it, it's multi purpose you know it, it's a difficult to distinguish sometime whether it is inbound uh, inbound door or outbound door one more i will see another questions uh, i'm going one by one who are po posted this one and can you explain cross docking yeah okay cross docking means okay one sec cross docking means like you know i just said like you know for example you have a certain product some x product this product when you receive it you receive the product you receive this handling unit instead of going to the storage area it goes to the direct outbound area then moving sending back to the customer that means this handling unit this hu it consists of a product this product it may not store into the stage storage area you may not store it it comes and it goes automatically means you receive the goods then you move from inbound staging area to outbound staging area from outbound staging area you load it and you send it to the customer okay you unload it you, you receive the goods certainly you receive the goods but you, may, you are not going to do any activities on the cross docking products you are not going to do any packing or repacking anything you receive it and you deliver it for example in a distribution uh, warehouses where what happened transit warehouse also krishna you may know the merit uh, i think who is asking this one cross docking is asking any any bully something yeah yeah see this one so you know the transit warehouses for example you are moving one product of a, you are is a based on the route am i right based on the route you know you want to optimize the even transport also what you will deliver you will deliver to the one transit warehouse from the transit warehouse just you know you may not store it just you receive it and you will send it to the some uh, for example the product is going to the same location so what they will do is they will drop at the transit warehouse from the transit warehouse they will send it to the a customer for example this product you, you received from different warehouse this product you receive it but system says that when you are scan the goods what will happen it says that no this product it proposes to the outbound directly because if you set up master data automatically when you scan this product it never proposes here it never proposes what it proposes it proposes destination bin okay always source source and destination so source bin is at the stay inbound area now then it moves to automatically it proposes to the here then then uh, warehouse clerk will understand that this is the cross docking product is directly proposed in the outbound then through that outbound see as i said like you know this uh, cross docking product is having inbound delivery and also outbound delivery at the same time one is inbound delivery you receive it and same time we have outbound delivery for sending the goods okay so this product it may not go to the higher storage area higher area. directly you move it here so there are some business um, requirement you know uh, uh, cross docking may require may not require don't think like you know whatever you are learning means that everything you need to implement in a warehouse it may not require you know so they don't need also sometimes so you may me may learn you know majority of things but you may not use everything in a warehouse so it depends on the business requirement whether you may use a cross docking or not is up to them and also labor management ad management and the transportation if it is linked with the tm then 
it's all business requirement whether they want to go for uh, different uh, different uh, packages what else are other question complex uh, outbound process so we will we will do that one vendor return process for example you receive the goods but there is a damage you want to send it there that is called vendor return process for example you deliver the product to the customer but customer will return return to you that is called customer then is you will cover with the vendor and um, customer return that is inbound process yes i'm planning to cover on that um i'll see because i will try to uh, give more insight on that okay but as i said like you know once you understand this process you no know, you won't feel like something different these things oh these are all same okay i will explain such a way that you know you may not feel what you have to do so that you can set up any kind of process no matter it is whether it is a customer return inbound or whether it is a uh, vendor return um, vendor inbound process or from the stock transfer order from one one plant to another plant you receive it so whatever it is okay but how you are going to map your documents that's a very important if you map the documents both s4 system ewm system so the system no matter it is whether it is a vendor return or a customer return or whatever it is system knows this is the inbound this is the outbound okay the process remains same but how you maintain this uh, this document types and all the system tells what kind of uh, delivery it is this sayed raj yes what is the p um p s h u pick h u what do you mean that see as i said like you know we have a pick h u s and a pack h u s pick h u s you use the picking the goods and also we have a c p h u s also okay remember if you want to pick the goods for example if it's a single pallet okay remember see i have a pallet maybe i will show some wonderful picture so that you know this okay see for example i got a order i got a order so that order you know this entire pallet is required so do i need a pick pallet um, pick hq is required for me i don't need this one because it is a pallet itself is a hu there so directly the using high stacker using the, the forklift guy you know he will pick this one directly he scans he will pick it he will move to here and you may not do any packing also you don't need to do any pack that means this pallet hu you know that pick hu become is a it become a uh, cp hu okay so and also i just said if it's a loose parts you may need a pick hu where you will uh, uh, collect different uh, bins and then you will drop into pick hu then uh, that pick hu you mean the box trolleys you move to the packing area then you would pack it and then you attach the pallet then you move to the staging area so as i said you know dif uh, different scenarios you use a different kind of um, hu so like you know whether you need a pick hu where you need a pick hu where you don't need a pick hu if you are picking direct pallet itself pallet itself is a pin, is a pick hu is also is a is a is a cp hu pallet itself pick and also is a um cp hu so we we will see that all these things you know where whether we need a pick hu uh, where we need to use a pick hu where we don't need to use a pick hu and also where we use a cp hu where we don't use a cp hu and uh, can you explain the automated warehouse yet uh, if returnable is over what is okay can you explain one more time automated warehouse uh viswajit i am going to um, uh, display I means so play one video so that you will understand the um, uh, asrs okay automated storage and automated retrieval but quickly i can give one uh, thing okay see viswajit if if you want to unloading here okay what you are doing is you need a warehouse operator to unload it here once unloaded you stage it you need you need one warehouse operator you need move this one move and 
and then from there you may move to the hyrax then again warehouse operator required you may move it here or you may move it here that means every time you see move the hu from source to destination you need a warehouse operator is required here whereas automated warehouse you don't need any human being so just you will drop the conveyor through the conveyor it goes to the uh, different racks their automatic mission it, it takes the goods and you will do the put away in system mean mechanical equipment through the mechanical equipment you, need, you you can do put away and also stock removal based on the order okay so remember there is a difference between the automated warehouse and non automated warehouse uh, warehouse so what we are dis discussing more on um uh, is a non automated warehouse okay i i will i will uh, play one uh, couple of videos because we have a two hour session so one and a half hour is over just uh, a few more questions i will discuss then i will see uh, does the system proposes to keep it in the bin happens the system proposes to keep it in a bin happens at the inbound takes plus yes uh sunita yes you are right as i said like you know we have a put away strategies we have a stock removal strategy as we requested here inbound see as soon as you you receive the handling name right you have received handling you unload the handling unit as soon as they unload the task the system proposes then where this product should go so it creates a warehouse task where where should go this product for example whether this product should go here whether should go to here whether should go to here yes there is a put away strategies then you maintain the these strategies for the product so that which when you receive the product product means within the handling unit you have a product am i right handling unit it consists it consists of a products the product it drives the product where this product should go to respective bin whether it go to the hyrax this is called the hyrax this also hyrax and this one is a mez because first floor ground floor am i right this is a mez floor mez nine floor or this is also floor area racks so system automatically proposes you need not do anything if you do complex inbound process what we did last time am i right system proposed me two bit two two racks one is a wide aisle reserve one is a wide aisle uh, location how you how is the system is proposing because you, you have you need to maintain certain parameters certain controls then only system proposes where this product should go hope i cleared your doubt but we have several strategies based on strategies you will uh, system proposes where should go and uh, okay sorry muted when wind vendor sending goods to warehouse house vehicle is moved to select door that's why is one of the stories yeah vara prasad is asking like when vendor sending goods to warehouse the vehicle is moved to selected door that's why it is it is the one type of storage no vara prasad see first of all you know you want to define this warehouse you have to define the structure am i right you have to define it what is the doors how many doors you need what is the staging area what is the packing area how many racks you need what is the floor area storage type or So you need to define first. Once you define it, then based on the um, um, uh, processes, am I right? System proposes. Um, system tells the like which vehicle should uh, uh, should um, should dock which door. We can do. See, our our training is we are not at all just doing for only inbound complex. We are doing inbound complex with the transportation area. even with um, with ad management also that means when vehicle check in where the where this um, transportation should should wait from where when should the dock it here okay so which door is empty such a way that the transportation in it is docked then you do unloading then you do that okay but first of all to to perform all these activities you should create a master data remember whatever i discussed so far storage type storage section storage bins work centers high racks mezzanine bins even um, 
even in conveyors, everything, you know, you have to define, it comes under a master data. You need to define everything in a EWM. Then only you will know that, then only the system knows that what kind of storage type, what kind of storage bins, and uh, so that's why you have to define it. Otherwise system, you know, it, won't, uh, it won't understand that. Next question. Um, okay. Venkat Madileli. I believe it's a planned CPHU. Okay. Yeah, generally we use, as I said, no, PKHU or like no, CPHU. We may use two things. Uh, okay. It's not a planned CPHU. It's a, uh, it is a PKHU or uh, CPHU. Planning CPHU. And before we, we meet, can you can please work for course documents, PDF recordings, etc. at location. Uh, Syed, uh, I believe um, uh, Sastra Geek will help you on this one. Um, what I means they will provide you course documents, PDFs, all the record locations, access, everything they will take care. Okay. Now, what I will do is uh, I have collected a couple of um, videos. I know is the open source only, but as a part of course, you know, what videos is uh, enough for us, you know, so that you will, uh, whatever we discuss so far, you will get, you will get a better idea on that. Okay. Just we have 20 minutes. I will try to um, play as many videos as possible if you are patient enough. Okay. Okay. Even I'm sharing this one also so that, you know. So, first of all, you know, I will explain. First, I will play around this one. Typical warehouse management systems. So, maybe I will give it to this uh, in a text file so that you, know, you can also play around after that. Find whiteboard made for. Can anybody? Can anybody tell me like whether you can hear this sound also? Even video sound. We first need to talk about your warehouse layout. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So you have your shelving. Maybe you have an inbound dock and an outbound dock, a receiving station, a packaging station, and a workstation where you can manufacture items, make bundles, or whatever else. Video. The first no, step is video. creating zone. They cannot see the video. Sorry, guys. We first need to talk about your warehouse layout. So you have your shelving. Maybe you have an inbound dock and an outbound dock, a receiving station, a packaging station, and a workstation where you can manufacture items, make bundles, or whatever else. The first step is creating zones. Creating zones or areas helps organize your warehouse and increase picking efficiency. There are two clear zones in this model. We have the A zone and the B zone. Next, we define rows. Rows are intuitive because they follow the flow of your picking patterns. These are your locations. Let's take a closer look at row A02. In this example, we define locations based on bay or column and row. So there are nine locations. This location is zone A, aisle or row A02, bay 102, row B. But within each location, you can have sublocations. So within this location, you have sublocation 1, 2, 3, and so on all the way to 25. Whether a location or a sublocation, this is where you put your bins. We tend to think of bins as a physical box, but it makes more sense to think of bins as the empty space inside of the box. That is how the system views it. You fill the empty space with products. Then you give the bin a number or a tag. The system then stores all of that information. That's the SKU, the quantity, the expiration date, the lot number, the unit of measure, and the product volume. With that in mind, this bin location is zone A, aisle A02, bay 102, row A, number 19. That is the full location name. When an order comes in, this is where your picker goes. Within this location, you have a physical bin where you store your products. There are two other kinds of bins. First, you have virtual bins. Virtual bins are for products, like books, that are already barcoded. The system counts each group of barcodes as a bin, but in reality, the books can be loose. This means that you can still track them without needing to actually put them in a box. Finally, you have movable bins. These bins are not fixed to a specific location, but instead are tied to a product. Here's how they work. Let's say you have a pallet come into your warehouse. 
you look inside and see that it is a large shipment of teddy bears. To turn this pallet into a movable bin, you scan the pallet into the system, print out a bin tag, and stick it to the pallet. Notice that the bin tag is just a number instead of a series of letters and numbers. This is because your movable bin is not tied to a specific location. So you've tagged your bin and now you can put it away. All you need to do is scan the bin tag and the location and now the system knows where your pallet of teddies is. Now, maybe you sell security equipment and so you wanna turn these bears into secret cameras. So you go pick up the pallet and take it to your workstation. Grab the pallet, scan the tag, scan the new location, and you're all set. Once you've worked on these bears, you can take them back to the same location, or you can move them somewhere else. It's the same process either way. Just scan, scan, and put away. When orders come in, the system always knows where to send your team. To further explain, I want to give you an analogy. Imagine yeah, this one, this, this is the one more. The one. I'm setting a DHL, there is smart warehouse. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. At DHL, we have a very methodical approach towards innovation. We have very strict face gates and only scale globally if we are confident that it will bring outcome for us or our customers. We take innovation very serious. We always have in our mind how we can better serve our customers, how we can have better quality, how we can have better safety, and how we can operate everything that we do in a better way. We publish a trend radar. We look at social, at business, or at technology trends in a very frequent manner. So we try things out in a local environment, improve it there. And then we move to the next phase, where we scale this up to proof of concepts in a regional environment. And once we have proven that part, we would scale globally. We move things, so things have always been important for us. The Internet of Things is not a new term for us. It's been something we have been connecting devices to our networks for a long, long time. The data we are actually looking at is something that the IT systems had it there for, for many months or even years. I think that the IoT platform, what brings is give us access to the data in a very fast manner, real time. We have a unique position. We have a great breadth of operations across the globe. We are the biggest player on the market and we have had really good success in driving those innovations across the globe. Thanks to our executive relationship with Cisco, they basically brought a product that today can definitely cover that indoor positioning with the infrastructure we already have set up. What is important also is that you have a visualization tool that helps you understand that information and put the information into context. This is why actually we needed an extra partner, and in this case, Conduce was brought into the mix. So the three parties, Cisco, DHL, and Conduce, actually put the system together. Basically, you are using uh, four sources of information. The first one is around indoor positioning. We are able to capture the Wi-Fi location of our scanners. We are also capturing the utilization of our material handling equipment. We also are capturing data around uh, the warehouse management systems, what are the tasks that are actually directed to our users. All those sources together basically bring us the visualization in the warehouse. As we started the project, we actually looked mainly at two aspects of that. One was around increasing efficiency in our warehouses. We want to see if we can actually run them better. And the second one was around safety. As we basically move forward, we want this actual tool to give us some insights in terms of making decisions. Aggregating the positioning of the individuals, we can actually get very interesting insights, such as, for example, heat maps. The heat maps will, of course, give us where are the highest concentrations of individuals and just I will share a couple of things. This is a um, DHL smart warehouse, and also um, this um, one more is there, but I don't want. Oh, we have 13 minutes time. So. Is it okay if I play around some time, maybe 10 minutes more? Uh, maybe you should have. Uh, I mean. Just give an overview of our structure of EW and how EW and uh, Emirate EW is different, this kind of stuff. 
it is pretty generic and uh, it is yeah it is, uh, tomorrow to tomorrow things. more we will tomorrow onwards we will go more on detailed yeah, uh, we were actually i mean today the first session joined okay can i know how many hours it will take uh, what is the duration you don't mind that is our interactive shastragik shastragik will give you right answer on that uh, yeah uh, okay you will be covering the syllabus right yeah then But, uh, uh, how many hours and uh, i don't know exact uh, how many hours we need to complete but every saturday sunday is a two hour session so mm -hmm. we will plan accordingly like you know mm -hmm. so that so but exactly we we did, we didn't we have not um, i mean uh, divided like you know, each topic should cover am i right so mm -hmm. so while working and all you may cover two three topics one time see for mm -hmm. example where our structure and without where our structure you know we cannot do anything yeah. so very difficult yes for yeah where our organized structure you have to set up and uh, yes for organized structure you have to set up and um, mm -hmm. the blm side then integration and so you know yeah yeah maybe i am uh, i don't know exact hours honestly if you ask me yeah it may be more it may be uh, may not be less i'm sure it may not be less it will be more mm -hmm. uh, when you your personal it. intro uh, what what kind of experience you have i have um, the 18 years experience you know so i have the okay You are working in EW, EW, yeah, uh, yeah, embedded EW, or uh, yes, I mean, yeah, 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 past four and a half years I've been working in embedded systems. Yeah, okay. So yet I, I hope you are teaching in twenty twenty one embedded EWM, right? That is the yeah, yeah, yeah. whole correct. purpose of this curriculum. I understand. Yes, yeah, it's a current one only. Whatever our hmm. version we have, current one only, we will discuss. Yeah. Hmm. Because I am from Bangalore, Karnataka. Okay. So 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 Bangalore Yeah, but we will give that you know we will explain it, um, but may not be that much difference. Only thing is like you know how you connect with the S4 mm -hmm. system to the EWM system. Mm -hmm. If it is embedded, everything is all you know you can access it, am I right? But mm -hmm. we will give more insight on that. We will give all the sure. steps you know how to do uh, if it is embedded, if it is non-embedded, what you do that while mm -hmm. while doing all these things, you know. Then we will say once we create a materials. Whether it is coming automatically in the EWM side, what steps you do, what happen if it is a embedded system, what happen if it is a non-embedded system. So we will give mm -hmm. all the uh, even some we will give transactions. What approach you do that if it is a non-embedded system? If it is embedded system, why we are not doing that? Okay, how okay. you can data flow will happen from a S4 system to the EWM system? Data okay. means master data. The even uh, master means what materials, customer vendor, plant. Storage location, yeah. so on, so on. Okay. This okay. whole course is focused towards uh, only configuration. Or you'll be teaching about uh, uh, the general gaps available. If you have any, uh, for example, any uh, rise of objects we worked on. Yeah, that's what I just said. For example, VAS is not at all there. VAS, am I right? So, like, you know, we will give my insight on that. For example, when you receive the inbound, you need mm -hmm. to get a, um, um, uh, labels for that. Am I right? You need to H U labels. Mm -hmm. so you have a, some already basic thing is there how you can mm -hmm. announce it how mm -hmm. the requirement for example business requirement you should get product product name product details product mm -hmm. quantity and mm -hmm. way, so much information in the label when you print the hq label what information should get it mm -hmm. so you know that through the ppf action so you can set up all the printers and you know configuration of this condition based on the condition uh, uh, approach so okay. definitely yeah we, we we do some of the rise up but we will give more insight but we may not go because you know that am i right we need abapers to develop for that but no, we will no. give more insight that how we can do that see in a real time you know i will give that okay we got you after learning all these thing i will tell you okay this is the requirement we got it how we have done it. okay how we have done it so like that you know i can give some real time uh, uh, problems to you And real time mm -hmm. solution to you. Oh, this is the way we can do this. Okay. Understand. Yeah. Master Thank you. Master data when we put when we put the master data in uh, ECC, the data is pulled to EWM or. Um, yeah. Yes, madam. See, for Again, example, sorry, go ahead. Again, yep. uh, relevant whatever relevant to uh, warehouse, we have to do it in uh, uh, EWM only. and uh, yes, how that is connected again to yeah see 
for example you know in a ewm side whatever things you are doing you do that in a real time you have a several people am right for material management they do the master a lot of master data so you may help any warehouse related data if you want to fill the materials okay so each people designated people they do that but what data you need to transfer and all you you will take care of that okay so i do uh, sorry yeah go ahead a uh, quick question uh, so yeah, since yeah, you're talking ahead. about sorry uh, data and queues so there was a document shared by uh, uh, sasa creek about how the logical systems are set up and how the queues are set up between system mm-hmm. transfers are yeah. you going to show us that like how even yes. though we may not set them up no 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 we will them. set up we will set up in front oh. of you only everything see without the setup these things you know it's not good we will set up everything you know we will set up you know dummy warehouse in es4 system how you create a main warehouse here how you link it how link is the plant with the storage locations here how you transfer the master data here everything see system integration we set up master data integration everything we show that even i will show all the logical systems s4 logical system ewm logical system how you in, uh, how okay. you interface it i will run all i will show in front of everything yeah though is not part of our real time you may not do everything because the base is also involved but assuming that see in a training am i right see material management we don't have anybody am i right we have to set up for master data customer vendor we have to set up for example sales sales nobody is there we have to set up everything uh, how to create a sales order what is the pricing procedure what is the like you know some do- documents everything we have to do that but since we have a best practice system we will use as much as pos- as possible using best practice system to minimize the configuration other areas for example material management we may not focus on that what we need we will focus on that so that i can create inbound deliveries what we need in the ss sales side such a whether customer data and uh, what are the requirement we need to do that so that i can create a sales order so that you can fulfill the warehouse act outbound deliveries but, but okay. as i said since we are learning so we have to be at least to know some areas otherwise we cannot fulfill them right but don't worry about the, you don't know about uh, something but as much as possible i will cover even mm side i will cover with sales side also okay i will give you as much insight on that and you can announce at these parts later stage okay but real time as i said no you may not work on all the modules am right you may work ewm means uwm only there is a sourcing and procurement they take care and the sales guys they take care tm guys they take care quality guys they take care but only you need some integration definitely you work with them and you how you can interface it how you can connect these document types between the um, one area to our ewm side naidu sir uh... Uh, my name is vikram and i had a quick question for you yes, uh, my, my question is uh, will you be also covering uh, uh, in 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 addition to the happy path of posting transactions will you be also covering uh, you know reversals and yes, and, and you know yes, cancellation yeah. of uh, like you know yes uh, yes yeah, yeah okay yes yeah, yeah. Because, definitely yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay that Thank is you. a motto vikram actually because it's not just we are try- as i said first class is not we are going to cover happy process our intents are to cover even non happy process also for yes, example yes. once you once you are comfortable zone complex inbound process assume that then i will give like exceptions exception codes how you can adjust the quantities how you can adjust the quantity handling unit level how you can adjust the quantities at the inbound delivery unloading level what level you can adjust the quantity and the same thing picking also for example you receive you receive a handling unit you supposed to receive 100 100 quantity but you received only 90 quantity how you are going to do 10 quantity what you are going to do that okay and also how you are going to reject the deliveries okay so we will also work out a happy process i will try to uh, explain replicate as real as possible okay thank you sir that is thank you very much okay? yeah i do you see are we going to cover the fury and the integration with the uh, tm labor management and the uh, pm no labor and all we will give some insight on that but tm is uh, uh, because you know, i i can cover with the ad management transportation unit okay. but tm is a separate module am i right 
no uh, i want to know what i want to say the integration between the edwm and the modules see i'm not talking about individual modules of pm and those things no no we definitely yeah we, we definitely we have to do integration between the sourcing and procurement ewm and sales and ewm and if are working quality also quality how to interface with the ewm even tm because tm we are not covering uh, but we will see whether whether I assume that if time permits you know beyond my interest you know see whether we can because these are all too much configuration whether we can do some configuration so at least one happy process so that you will understand that how it works so okay. but even pp is there right yes For, production also we will will go through for example somebody asked me production also. no no i mean i am see actually since it is a ewm process we need to more care take care of ewm only but only yeah. thing is by, by wherever integration comes we need to understand the how the other modules flow into the ewm what is to be impact yeah. of that one that is yeah. to be there. that's that's what i want to understand i, I know that yeah. we cannot go in dual or other modules yeah, yeah. but definitely uh, said but definitely we do for the sourcing and procurement sales we do integrate with ewm but our finance anyway is already there so um, only we will see whether we can do one uh, uh, production also one production integration uh, we are working out but you know um, the time permits okay. for that but okay. these things I'm... don't worry about that once you are comfortable with ewm the integration is is not I means is not a tough also okay so it's all business requirement sometimes some business warehouse you know they don't need tm also Business, yes. Yeah, this no. all business. Somebody no, they don't need not. labor management also. Okay, no, no, no. But actually, in a real, real scenario, you may not work all also. You may need to be able to. You may need to as per business requirement. We may need to only in one also. But yeah, as 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 a training, we need to understand by in few, so that yeah, yeah. Can, no, no. All 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 scenarios. Whenever you in person want to go in interview or some other things, you need to be. clear about what is the thing and you can prepare for and as a full time consultant yeah sure. i will and see how much uh, how much okay. we can cover it okay, okay. How how are are beyond beyond my interest see that because okay. you know some out things whether we can replicate here or not is a, is a, means i'm afraid at the moment when okay. whether we can integrate all these things see sourcing okay. and procurement sales is fine you know is the easy is we can do that okay. so quality also uh, we are I'm working uh, quality also we can see whether we can establish Okay. So quality. Are you going to are you going to do through theory also? Yeah, theory theory we we didn't mention it, but I will. I'm trying to show some theory also, like no, you know, how to. No, see nowadays nowadays even people are working on theory only. Theory is the hot topic. You see, I mean, you W mean nowadays all people are not at all working in theory at all. No, all it's the, fine. All I just said like you know, see theory is a just you know is a web based application. Right? If you enable yeah, it, yes. you will get it that. Certainly, we can show. We will. i will ask parminder ji means uh, see that you know how we can enable for the free applications we can see how is the tiles looks like you know what are the activities we can do in a, um, what is, what is thing, how you do gui yeah, how you do yes. in the web based so, yes. we will we will add that what a, yeah. yes what a yeah. functional yeah. consultant can can need to do yeah uh, as a functional consultant yes, because not you, technical yeah yes. you know that there is a, a ewm you know is a vast you know is a, Um, yes, because you can understand. so many things, you know, people will. Uh, uh, it's a bounce okay. for them also. Once you understand the basics, you no, know, not basic. We can say it's a medium, advanced level only. We are covering. We are not just, you know, just only the inbound, outbound, inbound process like this. We are covering okay. every stage, real time scenarios. We are giving examples and we are set uping in front of you so that on the same time, you are learning also. It's not like you know set up after that we explain it. We will explain okay. business case. then you do the process after the configuration okay now do what are the derivable derivables we can have okay if never, can you repeat please no more derivables means we can we get this see actually the video hmm. you, the, they are recording the video you can get it see every time we cannot go for example when you are having an issue there will yeah. be any doc, an config document or any word document or something like that uh, where you can quickly refer for that one Yeah, I think we have documents. I believe that maybe I will check with the uh, Sastra Geek on that. Okay? okay, but if you have any doubt, you know we can ping me. I can we will no, no, give you. No, no, ping me. Okay, ping me. No, no. What? But document the also is there. I think so, the document is also there. Okay, see, so actually, uh, see, before coming to you, we also need to check check. Uh, every time we cannot come to you, no? 
means every time we yeah. can go and video see if, if i do agree video will be there will be given in a video yeah. there will be eight, for example one hour one hour video is there that yeah, point, know, what i'm look what i'm point looking for it may be in middle of our somewhere yes. i cannot hear total thing then i can no? yeah. if we have yeah. any document like that that could be so easy see, the sasagrik intention is once we i explain everything you know you people will create this document assume that you know you are working in a real time once you understand the inbound complex inbound process you would create this document that's what a, as an as a template they are creating so you you once i explain it you practice it you take all the screenshot everything systematically create a document there is a templates people will plug in there so that you know they are not just in the uh, learning only system wise but they are also preparing the documents No, like exact our, in a real time no no i do i do agree i do 100% agree but preparing mm-hmm. ourselves ourselves is okay but from your side are you going to give anything that's what uh, i will check with them I'm, i can't guarantee but okay. because you know the business process documents may not available all but mm-hmm. yeah okay. but i, I, I i'll to, check with them you, see, why, you, you were showing so many ppts are so many theory experiences are you going to get, share that also yeah this presentation whatever i presentation i will share with with you guys okay for example even i, I didn't um, explain the warehouse layout uh, i will share whatever i'm i'm giving and i will share presentations and everything okay mm-hmm. we have already as much materials we have don't worry about that we have several materials no, no, no. see actually see i very very am very particular about it ma i mm. do have many others presentations also they mm. don't give any word document of the configuration or what is it means i cannot go on continuously here for one hour and find out and whatever my document i am preparing that is different i do agree yeah, that's what when you define one time i don't think so you need anybody help because every you do already create a document right so why you need see once you set up everything you don't need anybody there see you have already document okay i'm telling you you don't need anything but you see beyond level if you have any doubt uh, certainly yeah we can give no, no, insight no, no, no. No, i do whatever i am preparing something different what i must need what is a reference document uh, reference okay. i don't think so we are providing yes. uh, for my knowledge yes. maybe we need to yes. check with the sastra geek you know okay. uh, are they okay. providing for that document? are you asking okay. about the configuration document the configuration yes, yes, document yes yes, yes, uh, yes yes i think tm they have a configuration document which is free really downloadable maybe bhupender can tell so bhupender bhupender is there okay let them let them reply after that Yeah. Okay. Just I will. I know somebody asked me ASRS. Just I will play one video. So before ending the session, few minutes. Okay. Just a minute. And this is the ASRS. You know. So I've got my essay written, and I've been working on it for about a week. So now I'm going to show you how I use Grammarly to edit. yeah this is the uh, uh, automated storage and retrieval system is a completely is, a, is an automated warehouse
this is a yes rsc yeah you can see him right no warehouse operator is here only few operators are working rest all you know pin put up activities even picking activities is it done by mechanical equipments so as i said you know these kind of warehouses you know where we have to use the mfs you know material flow system and um, see overall uh, how material even equipments you know you need to send some signals for the equipments when to pick it when to put away so in same thing using rf gun am right how warehouse operator logs in you, you know when you scan it where should go where should he has to put it and where should he pick it similarly using mechanical equipments so we have a separate model and that is a material flow system you know using mfs you know uh, there is a lot of thing electronics electrical you know plcs there are so many things related terminal so using that uh, approach you know we can establish this automated warehouse but uh, we may just give insight on that but we may not uh, go through this one So all this interfaces is done through IDOX or to have any other? Yeah, it is more or less you know IDOX only, and even XML sometime you know even XML also. Either XML and IDOX. XML also go through IDOX. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. it depends on business am right sometimes they may go for manual everything is i've seen you know sometimes nestle they are using asrs a lot of european there also they use asrs yeah, yeah because uh, you know long time back in caterpillar they were using this implementation but i was not involved in the interface yeah but oh, okay. thank you very much yeah But you know, it's a huge investment. Yes, sir. Am I right? That's it. It's all business requirement. Whether they need everything is automatic or whether it's semi-automatic or they have budget, they will do it. Budget also, you know, money involves everything. All right, that invest money. And I do. Mr. Nadu, uh, thank you. Uh, do Do we have a link for tomorrow? Uh, I think is um either um Aman or Bhupendra they can send a link. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nadu, no. I have I have one question. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, we are actually I am working on uh, one manufacturing uh, plant where we are implementing the EWM. So yeah. what I am looking for is like when production happens, they store yeah. it to the warehouse. Uh, yeah. So they after uh, production order good receipt, it goes to warehouse. Yeah. And then uh, raw material also they store into warehouse, and that uh, yeah. they provide. So, are we going to set up this kind of uh, in system? Yeah, uh, actually, in fact, somebody. Yeah, we we I discussed with Parminder Ji, but um, yeah, as we discussed, like you know, so how we do uh, inbound, outbound, you know. So we may cover even uh, production, but and as you know, that integration it is a very vast one to integrate with the production with EWM, but we can show one happy process. um once to create a production order then you know uh, from the mrp we can create from the mrp and um, process order and convert into production order and you release the production order and uh, you need to check the availability check and then the order will be uh, production order will be distributed to ewm then you you start again you know pay, picking the goods and issuing the goods for the consumption then as for the consumption then you you need to update the s4 system saying that you have consumed the goods and the same time whether you may finish the good whether you may send it to the customer or you may send it back to the warehouse like you know goods received away right? the process i'm trying to uh, set up that process whether we can show the configuration but is is a limited for this training yeah okay but and, um, uh, I'm, yeah yeah please yeah, Yeah. So, and uh, what about quality management? Because we have a quality management also set up. I think is the quality definitely. See, in a quality, you know, for example, you know, we discuss a lot. For example, if you receive the goods, we will take one example saying that okay, you receive the goods. Some dam dam has happened. Then, by using a dark method, I will I will throw it into the quality quality area. Then, quality team can take a decision whether this product is okay for the available for sale. Or pull up and away, or parcel quantity is available. But you know that again, S4 is integration. But I requested um, Parminder to implement the uh, set up a 
preempts a configuration. So the rest of the configure I can set up variable inside. But definitely we discuss a lot quality. You know, we discuss the quality, whether quality, what happened after take a decision, whether you will send it to the final put away, whether you will send a internal uh, rework or whether you will send it to the external rework or whether you will to scrap it. But this process we'll discuss, we will do some examples on that. But that the integration we need to, uh, I had a discussion with um, Parminder yesterday, but he mm -hmm. said they are going to cover that portion. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, is, uh, uh, yeah. and the, the, the problem which we are facing is like, uh, I think you also mm -hmm. know that, uh, yeah. that uh, uh, means updating from warehouse, updating the inventories to the S4. So that yeah. monitoring jobs, I don't think we will be able to set up, but we are facing a lot of issues in those areas. Yeah, we will cover monitor and I will, I will give my, as much um, real time uh, things in a monitor only. And also how to resolve the QCM, right? Say as soon as you do some activities in EWM side, same time it should update to the S4 system. Yeah. Okay? That's right. So I will, because end to end, for example, if you take a inbound process, if you have seen last yesterday's mean my last class video, I explained PTP only, completely procured to pay. Almost means I didn't for the all the invoice and everything, but I, I did for entire process. Almost I covered from the creation of purchase order, delivery, distributed mm -hmm. EWM, then performing all the various activities, then checking the stock in EWM, checking back to the delivery status in the S4 system, looking the again in the financial activities, looking the even a MMBE or MB52, where you can check the stock. So the stock should be the same, both EWM and also S4 system. In case of any deviation, definitely there is not, flow is not there. That means some updation is failing. Some uh, So you need to check all the queues. Yeah, we will, we'll, we'll, I mean, what we'll do is we'll try to create one errors, you know, so let, you know, how to fix the errors. Okay. Yeah, we will focus on all areas, real time, we focus, areas we will cover it so that you know you may not feel anything while while working in a real time process okay. even uploading data uploading the bins uploading the master data and uploading the all the controls how we can check the master and how where we have to use a, um, this bin sorting how frequently we can use the bin sorting in a real time are we using every day or different so th these are the real things you know we we will give on that Rather, not just only ewm we cover it but real time, how we face it, how, what we face so far, okay, how we solved it, we will give all the uh, best practices, um, whatever we learned it, we will give that as much information as possible. That would be good, I think. Adi, sir, I have a question. Yeah, Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, does EWM give automatic uh, uh, packing, cartonization? Yeah, is. That is a, again different topic, cartonization planning. But if you want to, we will give insight on that because you know that EWM is vast. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. If you want to cover, then we cover the advanced EWM. One more topic like you know, cartonization. No, I'm planning. just asking, is it an inherent yes, functionality yeah. of EWM? Yes, yes, it is there. Yes, it's a functionality. The cartonization planning is nothing. You know, in a layman term, I will tell you. For example, you have a different products we have, okay? Each products, you have a different packing specs. So if you get an order, how the system knows which packing should require for appropriate product. So based on the weight and volumes, that's why I said weights and dims is a matter for the packing. So the system proposes, yes, this many product, this packing enough, small, small handling in it, small packing, large packing, big packing. So using cartonization planning, you can automate the packing process such a way that based on the number of quantity, system proposes, yes, this many quantities, you go for this packing. You go, if it's a large one, you go for this pack. That is a cartonization planning. It's not anything uh, completely, you know, but only thing, how you, how you configure in EWM so that system proposes. Yeah, anything you have outside of this one, no, I will try to, See, I will spend the time on that, you know, I, whether we can set up out of this course, you know, we will try to, if you ask any questions, you know, we will, we will show that. Okay. If you wanted sure, like, you, you know, yeah, cartonization yeah. planning one, sometime. One, one, yeah. What, 
is there a functionality of uh, dangerous goods packing also separately or no? In, I know that's a no, more detailed question. Yeah, if you wish to answer, we'll talk later. As yeah. as a standard function, yes. Yeah. As you know that, you know, dangerous goods, okay. there is a, uh, for example, if you get order, if you're delivering to the dangerous to the customer, there is a, some logistics procedure is there, right? So that right. system, I think they know that which products is a dangerous goods, so that what kind of, uh, once we pick it, pack it, and before delivering, what kind of documentation is required to deliver to the customer? Because, you know, if you send a dangerous goods by flight or by ship, you know, they will ask paperwork for that. So right. definitely, but we may not cover that many, so many things, but uh, we can give Sorry. some insight okay. on that. As I said, like real time, I explained, right? What paperwork is required? Is it picking, packing is real? Same sure. thing only. Only thing is the paperwork is required. Certain paperwork is required such a way that uh, you, you maybe in you know, a customs may not stop that. So we have seen several times they, uh, they deliver it, but finally they will send it back to return saying that paperwork is missing. So any dangerous goods, there's a proper documentation required to deliver that. But the only thing is how you manage you, the you know, master data, master data such a way that this product belongs to the dangerous good so that the indication where a person will know that this is a dangerous product. They should be properly, we have to pack it properly and also you should do documentation. And the material master, there is a flag Got like it. environmental yeah. you know, plant data. So, Once that flag is checked, then all so I'm this- I'm talking uh, about packing material. I'm yeah, yeah, all this process, material. all this process will come. All this process will come. If that flag is done, the yeah. packing material suitable for that hazardous material will be picked up supposing it has to be a radioactive material a different packaging will be there yeah. so all those things will be there if that flag has been checked in the metal master yeah. and also oh, as you know that in the real you time you know unless a cartonization planning one one friend is said is cartonized planning it's a minute to happen cartonized planning you know it's may not work all work also sometimes unless you know if it's amazon one there they have so much automation but a lot of warehouse you know all men pick it all packing is the manual process only. What they see based on the weight and volume and the sizes, they will see, okay, this packing more than enough for that. So majority, they work on that. They have all packing materials, all the defined packing specs, but the only thing is they will see based on the weight and okay, this packing is more than enough. Same thing when it's dangerous comes, then they will say, oh, this is a dangerous product. What we have to use appropriate packing material. But all packing materials definitely is already defined in the EWA. Actually, nowadays, most of them, they're Thanks. using this carton machine. So once uh, all these uh, units have been um, decided and yeah. that carton will be uh, automatically sized and, you know, they will cut the carton box and make it suitable to that. So Correct. that is being used in most of the places. That's what we have discussed, Emma, right? When you set up the master data, one each equal to one product and one yeah. carton is equal to how many products? And uh, one pallet is different out. units. Uh, say, supposing you've got three different materials of different sizes. Yeah. So this cubing takes place and it calculates what is the cubical size. And yeah. This carton box will be like, you know, it will cut that box and it will make that box suitable for that particular thing. Yeah. That is a completely automated packing. But see, that's what is it, warehouses will invest so much money. Options are that. there. They yeah. are based on procurement. The options can be chosen. Yeah, see, once you understand basic, all the concept, basic implementation, you know, rest advance, you know, is, is a matter of time for you guys, you know, to, to, I mean, to learn and do that. Okay. See, anything fundamental is important, right? Once you are good on that, you know, top of that, you can always do that anything. Mr. Naida, I just want a quick confirmation. So from tomorrow onwards, you'll be following the course curriculum that's been published on yes, the topics. You yes, you are right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this only today because we want uh, to. I do. Uh, quick question: Do you cover the consumption-based uh, replenishment in this course? It is a standard uh, function. Yeah, I I cover um, uh, just um, um, maybe planned um, uh, replenishment. We have several replenishment, right? Um, uh, specifically, the consumption-based replenishment. I don't want to get into the uh, production in planning. Only when the report yeah, is done. Yeah, consumption. Yes, yeah, consumption. For example, you know. Uh, warehouse clerk will go to the bin and he, he needs some 10 quantity, but 
is the only nine quantities there. No, so no, no. Where... I'm not telling that. Let me give this example. Yeah. There is a finished product which has got like 150 components in that. Okay. Yeah. There is um, uh, the uh, PP. The production planning reports the oh. finished product into the warehouse, oh, okay. yeah. which is made to stock. Yeah. Because okay, we are not covering. Report... Okay. Got it. Yeah. Once it is reported, what happens? We keep on uh, issuing the material for making that product. And once yeah. it is reported immediately, the uh, based on the uh, bill of material, uh, yeah. here the stock will reduce, right? Yeah. Uh, whatever the component used, the stock will reduce in the inventory. And yeah. then the uh, replenishment, either it can be like Kanban or whatever the process we are going to use, it is yeah. going to make a replenishment requirement. From there, it will trigger a, a purchase requirement and the purchase order will be generated, whatever it is. Yeah. So do we cover that replenishment? Honestly, no. Because we... Even the production is not at all there in our topic, but because because a lot of uh, Parminder says that a lot of people are asking, maybe we may show this is too much. Production. I understand, yeah, yeah. I understand it is too much, but I just wanted to know if the replenishment is covered. Uh, if it is not, yeah, yeah, basically, replenishment is covered definitely. Is the replenishment is covered from reserve area to the um, different beams? You know, how we yeah. can do how we can so set up like, you know, the movement from yeah. case peak area to unit peak area. And yeah, bulk storage, these things. Yeah, will be anything done. bulk storage, even storage to floor area to main bins. It's all like pickable location. We can move. Not in. not production based, like you know, not like production part. based. Yeah, yeah. but once Thanks. you understand the remaining thing, you know, is, is a, okay. Because they need to see in the system, like we <laughs> yeah, can help yeah, yeah, the yeah. part. But only production is because you know it's a mass because every area is a different. So, yes, for you how to set up. See, I know that you people are asking, see how much we can provide you that, you know. Though, because yeah, we are always not promising you. Expectation use. is too much, I understand. But what is available, if we know that is. Yeah. Clear, yeah. We have the right uh, we, we'll see if, in, if time permits, you know. Uh, if we set up, you know, our system, you know, definitely we will share that knowledge to you guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience. Yeah. 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 I do one thing, one, one question. Yeah. Uh, when the participants are more and the online way and uh, whenever going to do the configuration other things in the next class whenever people who have many doubts or clarifications or having issues in their uh, each individual person config issues or something that well then how we can going to handle that yeah um i think this is um, uh, sastra geek they will take care they have you can send an email to them they can respond it uh, maybe I think is a uh, is a Bupendra is, is there. I do. There is a yeah. place called uh, not Telegram. Uh, yeah. So they will have one uh, VIP group in the Telegram created. There you can post okay. the questions because I have done other courses and it okay. is very well organized here. So you place the question in that uh, Telegram group and they will okay. have one more question and answer session also. And uh, you will not find leftover in this. I'm telling you. I am. I have done other courses. So that was very convenient. So how it operates is I, I, I am not uh, from Shastra. No, I got it. Still. No, no, no. See, sometimes no, there could be some issues pertaining to that server or some other things with which we can handle. See, I do agree. Normal groups and other waho share we are handling. Means, uh, are we getting any response from the? Uh, yes. yes, that is what I'm. I no, no, see, no, 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 I, no, 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 see, no. I got it. What you are saying. I got it. What you are saying, there is a stand. There is a standard uh, normal groups or some other things which we are standard people are there. Whenever mm -hmm. we are talking that one, when you are within the with the in the server, when you are having which one, you have a part of topic we have to discuss already. If you are having any issues mm -hmm. in that one, he is going to cover by the instructor or in the Telegram group. No, no, no. Both, both, I think both the instructor and Telegram group. Both. Yeah. yeah. That's See, what I'm saying. No, let, let me give you an example. Yeah, yeah. Just give me one don't worry. Uh, let, me give you, yeah. let me give you an example so that mm -hmm. will make it more clear. So we are 10 people in the class. So mm -hmm. all the 10 people we are there, we are all doing the assignment. And there yes. are instructors also. What we do is mm -hmm. I have got some doubt. I don't know. But when you are doing it, you figured out what is right. Yes. So when I post a question, you have got the opportunity to answer me and uh, educate me. Supposing okay. you also don't know, nobody knows. The instructor will come into the picture. And they will, he or she, they will give a solution there. And then we can go. Suppose the system has got some error, they will find out and they'll, we have to give the screenshot 
so somebody yeah. will answer mostly the instructors will answer or yeah. sometimes some smart uh, students also will answer yeah. okay yeah okay. did i answer you or did i confuse you okay. i'm sorry okay mm. hope if no questions we will end the session but tomorrow onwards we will start real uh, real walk okay thank you naidu thank you mr naidu Th thank you all yeah, thank you for uh, your patience and listening okay yeah. thank you all have a nice day it's good night yeah.